Hello friends, this video on structural organization of animals part 26 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. The female reproductive system. Here you have ovaries. One pair of ovaries is attached at the intersegmental septum of the 12th and 13th segment. You remember intersegmental septum. What is that? Okay, so ovaries, where do we see the ovaries? These pair of structures is nothing but ovaries. So what do we, they do? Ovaries are those organs which produce the egg. So they will basically produce egg. Then there is an ovarian funnel which is present beneath the ovaries to continue into oviduct. So this is your ovarian funnel. You see a funnel like structure. What does it do? It will basically, it is present just below the ovary so that when the ovaries release the eggs, it can just take that and it can connect it to the oviduct. So this is ovarian funnel. Then there is a female genital pore which exists singly open on the ventral side as a single median female genital pore on the 14th segment. So if you see on this 14th segment somewhere here, I mean from this side it is not visible but it is present ventrally at the middle. So basically this ovaries will release eggs, eggs will get into this ovarian funnel and then through this oviduct that is a tube like structure it will go out through the female genital pore so there is just one female genital pore but there is a pair of male genital pores so male genital pores exist in pairs but female genital pore is only one right so from here the female genital pore will be released outside so now what do you understand from whatever we have discussed now, earthworm will produce the sperms using the testes, seminal vesicles and it will pass through this uh, vast difference and then it will be given to some other earthworm through this male genital pore. That is one part. Now, this earthworm in order to re reproduce itself, what it will do, it will take sperms from some other earthworm through the spermatica and store them in spermatica. Okay, now it will produce eggs from ovaries and that will be released via the female genital pore. So now you have the eggs are released from female genital pore and the male sex cells are present in spermatica. Now the question is how, the, how both will meet, how the male sex cells in the spermatica will fertilize the egg which is present in the female genital pore. So that is what we will see when we talk about the process of reproduction. But this point is clear, right? If it is not clear, please recap and view it again. Now we will try to understand the process of reproduction. Please understand it very carefully so that you don't have any confusion. The first step that happens for reproduction is that exchange of spermatophores during mating. Okay, so the first step is exchange of spermatophores during mating. As I said here, mating happens between two earthworms just to exchange their packets of sperms. So spermatophore is nothing but a packet containing the sperms. So how do they do this? This is how they do it. So this is one earthworm. This is another earthworm. So this dark colored structure represents the clitellum. Okay, so now what happens from here? The place where they are joined together, this will give its sperm to this one and this will give its sperm to this one. So now if you look at it very closely, you will see that the area where they receive sperm, that is on the front side. That means on the front side of both the earthworm is the place where they receive sperm. And on the back side is the area where they give sperm, right? So that is why they and they align themselves in a position such that the front side of one overlap with the back side of the other again the back side of the first overlap with the front side of the other so that they can suppose this will give its sperm and this can take it again this will give its sperm and this can take it right so that is how they'll exchange the spermatophores during mating after that what happens the earthworm, so now they both have their sperm packets in their spermatica. Now the earthworm will develop a tube like structure around it which is slimy in nature and which is filled with a fluid. 
So this is how it will do it. So this was the clitellum and around the clitellum a tube like structure is formed which is filled with fluid. Right? Okay. This is the second step. Now the earthworm will start to move out of the slime tube. So this is the tube and the earthworm gradually starts to move forward. What happens during this process of movement? The tube gradually passes over the female pore picking up the eggs. So now when the earthworm is moving, the female pore will also come, right? So the female pore will release the eggs. So the eggs will be inside the tube. So the tube will get the eggs. Again, the tube will pass over the male pore called the spermatheca, which has the stored perm called the spermatozoa. So again, the tube will also have the spermatheca. So spermatheca will also produce the male sperms. So both the male sperms and the female cells, both will be deposited or both will be dropped by the earthworm inside this tube. And then fertilization will take place and the slime tube closes off as the worm moves completely out of the tube. Now, now what is the situation? The earthworm has dropped the female sex cell. The earthworm has dropped the sperms. So the eggs and the sperms are now not in the earthworm body. It is in that tube. So now what will the earthworm do? The earthworm will just move out. So now what is left out? This tube, the slime tube with eggs and sperms. And eggs and sperms are the things which we need for fertilization. So now what will happen? This slime tube will close on both the ends. Both the ends it will get closed and it will form a structure which is known as egg cocoon, something like this. So this cocoon which is formed, it is like a, a shell inside which the fertilization happens and a small worm starts forming. So these fertilized eggs will later develop into young worms. So this is the process of reproduction of earthworm. So it is pretty interesting as well as pretty simple. So even though it is bisexual, that it is, that is it has both male and female reproductive organs, but still mating happens to exchange the sperms. Now once the sperms are exchanged, then the fertilization happens between the exchanged sperm and the egg. And an egg cocoon is formed which is put into the soil and over a period of time, over a couple of months, a little earthworm is formed. Right? So with this, we have reached towards the end of our discussion on morphology and anatomy of earthworm. So what did you observe? We observed that earthworms also have a distinct digestive, respiratory, excretory, reproductive system, right? We talked about the significance of having segments. We talked about we talked about how do they locomo I mean how do they move from one case to another? How blood circulation take place? Now, after studying so much about earthworms, let us see why are earthworms called farmer's friend. What special do they do? Let us see. Earthworms contribute in improving the soil fertility. Good question. But why? That's because when you look into, we spoke about the kind of food habit earthworms have, right? So what do they have as food? They take up soil. And in that soil, there are some dead or living organic matter mixed up. So it, it feeds on all those stuff. So, when the process of digestion happens, it only selects those matter which, it's on, which it wants to have and the undigested part is thrown out through the anus as excreta. Now, excreta of earthworm is often known as worm castings. So, they are called worm castings. That is nothing but excreta of earthworm. Now these worm castings are very very beneficial to improve the fertility of the soil and there it also contains many nutrients which are very very useful for the plant. So now since earthworms live on soil, so they will throw out their excreta 
obviously on the soil. So the fertility of the soil is increasing, the pla plants are also improving because they are getting more nutrients. So earthworm castings contain nutrients useful for plants. Burrows in the soil allow air, water and nutrients to reach deep within the soil. Again, as, as I was talking about, there is the mouth covering, you remember, prostomium, which acts like a wedge in order to burrow into the soil. So when they dig into the soil, that digging actually helps because when you dig the soil, the deeper layers of the soil also get some air, also get some water and nutrients. So it increases the quality of the deeper layer of soil. So that ways earthworms are said to be farmers friend because farmers always have this intention of growing good crops, growing a lot of crops, increasing the soil fertility and earthworms help in all of them. So that is why as you can see in the picture whenever you see an earthworm around the roadside, around the streets, what should you do? You should not kill it. You should pick it up and bring it back home. And what is the home of the earthworm? A garden or a land where you have soil, plants, etc. In that case, the earthworm will also be living and it will also give some benefits to the plants. Right? So with this, um, I have come to an end on, to a, on the discussion on earthworm. So the next organism which we are going to talk Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.